What is going on guys? Today we are going to be installing a carbon fiber steering wheel as well as a custom airbag cover on the officially completed 2017 Volkswagen Golf R, which is super exciting as you guys can see. I have it here today. I wanna to show you this. For those that maybe watched the previous video, we've already done steering wheel installs like this on that one, the RS3. And I'll just show you super quick. And you can see everything is custom on that. So we're gonna be doing the same thing now to the Golf R over here. From the same supplier, Christina, I'll be showing you guys how to get this steering wheel at a steal of a deal, a steal price. Only 500 bucks for the steering wheel and only about 80 bucks, I think, for the actual custom airbag cover. So check this thing out. Absolutely nuts. There's so many people online that sell these for over a thousand dollars, which is, you're just getting ripped off. This right here, this whole thing was 500. It is a OEM steering wheel. It is an OEM Volkswagen cover. And for those that want to know how I picked this stuff up, stay to the end of the video because I'll be going in depth on how to actually purchase this super quick and the legit way. So as you guys can see, this is the custom Volkswagen airbag cover. We have it in leather. And then we have the blue stitching to match the, uh, the lackeys blue on the car. Moving forward from that, check out this bad boy. Here, we're going to take this off. They ship it so nicely here. Again, we did, we chose the same leather the flat leather we didn't want to do anything else i didn't want to do anything else with the blue stitching carbon fiber flat bottom steering wheel with the blue stripe it is so beautiful it is so perfect and i'm going to show you how to install this right now all right so the first step in removing the steering wheel and the airbag is go ahead and grab yourself a long flathead screwdriver or something similar you want to pull the steering wheel out and down as far as you can because what we're trying to do is access the back of the steering wheel there are going to be two holes where we stick this through and i'll show you in a second where we can unlatch the airbag and actually pull it off the car so let me show you how to do that now first thing we're going to do turn the car on you have to have the car on in my last video doing this so many people were arguing with me that you have to turn the battery off before you start playing with this which Makes sense, but you can't physically turn the wheel without the car on. So leave the car on and just unclip the uh, the airbag first. Then we will turn the battery off. So let me show you how to do this. We're going to stick this behind here and we're going to unclip it here. All right. So right now you are seeing me from the backside of the steering wheel. You can see we've adjusted the steering wheel to where it shows this little hole right here. What you're going to do, we may be able to see it. Maybe we won't, but in there, you can see it actually perfectly. This little clip up top here, we need to push it down and off the latch that's in here. You can see it perfectly. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so the big screwdriver, not really working well. Switch it up to a smaller flathead. This way we can actually, you can kind of feel, you'll know when you're above the clip, just like that, and you'll see this side just popped out, that simple. Now what you wanna do, start the car, rotate the wheel again, we're gonna turn the car off and do the same thing. You'll feel it. And then just like that, we have a free wheel. Now, we have a free airbag. Before you start pulling this out, before you turn the battery off, it's a lot easier if you straighten the wheel out for yourself. Now we're gonna go unplug the battery. Alrighty, just so I don't forget, not only does uh, changing the steering wheel work for the Volkswagen Golf R, the 2017, probably the 2018, so on and so forth, it also works on the Golf, the GTI, the Golf R, and this is a very similar method. Almost everything is exactly the same as it would be to doing it on an Audi A3, S3, or RS3, as it is the same platform. There's just a, some very small, changes there, but again, you could use this as a guide for either cars. So now in order to undo the battery, pop this open, you just need to unplug the negative terminal here. I believe it's a 10 mil. Yeah, it's 10 millimeters. We're just gonna unscrew this, kill the power going to the battery before we touch the airbag and let this sit for about 10 minutes. You kind of want all the electricity that's built up to kind of discharge, dissipate for itself before you start tampering with any of the airbag or electrical systems. Some useful tools to use is obviously, you know, your socket set, your ratchet set, 
Um, we also have this, this is a uh, tool for just all the accessories, the plastics here. You can see it's all plastic pry tools that we wanna use. It also comes with a pick kit, which we're gonna use now to get the airbag off. Um, and then there's a few other tools that I'll show you later on here. But what we're gonna to need to do now is after we wait 10 minutes, we're gonna slightly or lightly pull this out. And I want you to see there are two wires we're gonna to need to undo. This is the first one. And there's one black one right over here, which we're gonna do. So simply put, watch this. So you're gonna put this pick right around here, pull this, get it under, and then you can shimmy it out just like that. Second one is this black one right here, which you're gonna have to kind of feel around for it. And you just pull this back tab. You can see, it's hard to see in the video, but it's gonna face like this inwards. And then behind it is a little tab here. You just pull this and pull out. Now you've officially disassembled your airbag. And I'll show you how to do this at the final part. We're gonna take the steering wheel off and put the carbon one on. And then I'll show you how to transfer the new custom airbag cover on later. So. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is remove the steering wheel. In order to do that, you have something here, which is the, the steering wheel screw. You're gonna need a triple square, and I'll tell you which size that it is in a second. So this is the triple square. They make tons of different sizes and shapes of this. This one is an M12, and you can see it's like three squares together. Makes that weird look. We're gonna put this in here in the center, and there's a lot of force on this because there is Loctite. I try to lock it, brace the wheel with my knees, and we turn real hard and I lose my keys. And that's gonna unscrew it and loosen this puppy up. Once this is out, you've successfully freed the steering wheel. You can see the bolt is out. And then what we're gonna do is very lightly, let me get my keys that drop, pull this wheel forward. It comes out just like that. Now, it's extremely important not to play with your clock spring because this moves and it's very easy to do so. So grab yourself some tape just so you don't screw it up. Because if this gets turned one way or the other, there's a ribbon cable in here that will rip and that is very expensive to repair. So this is how we prevent that from happening. Just putting a little bit of tape on it just to keep everything in place. Next step is gonna be transferring this onto the new one and so on and so forth. So now we need to transfer this trim onto the new steering wheel here, as well as the paddle shifters, which is pretty simple. Grab yourself a plastic pry tool and be careful, slowly getting behind everything and separating it from what it's in. It's slowly, it's in here with plastic tabs that are pressed in to the, you can kind of see they're pressed into, into the, the steering wheel here. So we're just kind of lightly going around it. And this kind of takes a while. You know, you want to take your time with this because it is fragile and you want to kind of just bend everything out slowly and surely it will come out. So besides pulling it with your hands, if you take the pry tool, you can kind of find parts where you can slide it through and then you just twist it a bit and you can see we're pretty much separating the entire wheel itself. Got most of it freed by now, but just the pointer. So after a couple of minutes, just loosely pulling this, we were able to completely free, you can see the trim from the wheel, but we do have two wires going to the back and these are for the paddle shifters. So in order to do that, there's a little clip here. I wanna just like go like this, using a pick or your finger, whatever you can do. You wanna push this in and pull up. And we're disconnecting the paddle shifter. So I'm gonna do it to this side too. You can see right here, we're pushing this in right here and then pulling away ideally at the same time. And then that frees it up. So now we've officially freed that. And the next step is getting these paddle shifters out. And to do that, there is a T12, I think, T12 or T10 Torx screw. And there's just two on each side. So we're gonna unscrew this and then you just literally it just pulls out from the back here. But no, it just pulls out just like that. And we've removed that one. And then from the back again, pull it out and away and it will lift out like that. And we're free. Now we need to reverse the process and transfer everything to the new steering wheel. So starting with the paddle shifters, we're gonna slide this through here, through the little hole like that. And then we put these in, we push it. 
and the paddle shifter is installed. And don't worry, because we'll, it'll tighten up once you start screwing the screws back in. So we're putting this in here, make sure to get these tight, because if not, you will get a loose paddle shifter and nobody wants that. Just something to keep note, if you over tighten it, the paddle shifter will stay down. So literally, you see how it just clicked back out? That's how you want it. Give it a little bit of room. You'll know when you've over tightened it because it will stay locked. So just check it so you don't have to take the entire steering wheel back apart while you're doing this. And then we install the other side. And like I said before, you want it tight, but not too tight or the shifter will stay locked in place. So just check them before you put the wheel back on. All right, so putting the trim back in, literally the same process. First thing we want to do is figure out how to plug your, you know, your paddle shifters back in. That's one, two is over here. This, now we're in. Now we just have to slowly align all these little plastic tabs. They are fragile with the holes in the wheel, just like this, all the way around and just slowly kind of work your way around the wheel until everything falls in place. You can see how I'm doing it slightly. I'm not putting all the pressure on one side. So you do not want to break the plastic tabs or anything, but just go slowly around the wheel until the uh, trim is seated. Much easier and quicker taking it off, but everything is seated correctly on the wheel and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Now, everything's good. Paddle shifters work, double check. Time to put it back on here. Important step, on the wheel, there's a notch right there. You wanna line that up with the notch right there. That's on the steering column. So, line it up as best as you can and that is in. Very close, you can see, just like that. And that's pretty much it. Now we're gonna put the bolt back in and we have pretty much completed the process of installing the wheel. So if you didn't purchase the airbag cover, this is the end of the video for you. But if you have purchased the airbag cover, that's what we're gonna do next. And you want it tight. So you'll see kind of how much force I use. Just like that. Okay, not over tightened, but definitely tightened. Now we'll start working on this puppy. So removing the airbag cover from the airbag itself is, is quite a simple process, actually. You have four screws here, which are a T45, and we're gonna unscrew these four. We also need to undo the clips that actually hold this in. So you can see around here, there's metal tabs that hold the actual airbag in and this is a clip so you want to slightly ever so slightly bend it out around so that these black uh, black plastic tabs will slide out underneath it don't bend them too much you don't want to break them but just do this all the way around you might miss a few i've done that a few times on these cars but go around and make sure you're paying attention and just bend slightly each tab out once we've done all this the next step is taking these four screws out. All right, so I had a feeling that the video wasn't showing up close and in detail uh, how to actually remove the cover itself from the back here. So what I have here is a deployed Volkswagen Golf, Golf 4, Golf GTI airbag for the Mark 6, or sorry, the Mark 7. And I believe the Mark 8 should be the same airbag or very similar here. But this came off a 2017 Volkswagen Golf R. This is what we're going to be using for demo purposes to show you exactly how to remove this uh, airbag cover and put the new one on. It'll be the same process, so hopefully this helps you guys. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna see in the back here, this right here, this is gonna have to come off as well as that other harness. But for those curious, how you would do this is you'd use like a pick. We're gonna use some uh, little tweezers right here. And what you do is you pry it up like that, and then you can pull it out. And it's that simple. So you can see it again, you're gonna get it right under here pry it out and then you pull it off. And just like that, you'd disconnect that from the actual airbag. Now, the next thing we're gonna have to do is remove these screws here. Yeah, so it's a Torx 45. That's the correct one you wanna use. And what you're gonna have to do is uninstall these four screws that we have here. You wanna remove these four tabs because I'm 90% confident yeah, they screw into the actual airbag itself. So you have to remove these four if you want pull the airbag out, or at least the cover off. We're not actually touching the, the airbag material itself, but you'll see. That's three, and this is four. They're all the same size, so it does not matter. So once you unscrew these four screws here, the next thing we need to do is actually take this wiring 
off ever so slightly. And in order to do that, we have a few tabs that actually hold this bracket on. And you might have to use a screwdriver to kind of wiggle. You know, you want to push down and get these tabs to go back in place. Kind of like that, if I can, just like this. And then I believe there's one right here. So just push this up. And now this is free. And what we're going to do is separate this from the top. Now, the reason you need to take this off is because in order to access this, there's two special clips in the back that we need to remove in order for it to come off. And I'll show you that in a second. That's the only way to access it. The next thing you wanna do is take like a screwdriver. There's gonna be two clips. Oops, you can see there's gonna be one right here and one right here, the tabs actually. And what you need to do is push the tab like this. And then you can successfully remove this piece from the back of the airbag. Now, in order to actually get this piece off, what you're gonna need to do is loosen all these tabs that go around here. So, get a flat head and you just wanna bend them back. Not so big, but just enough because we don't want these to break off. Now, once you have all these out, you still won't be able to get it off. Why? Well, there's two clips, one and two. And we gotta get these out. In order to do that, you have to take this piece off and you shove this in here and you bend them out like that. And then on this side, you bend this out like that. You wanna slightly pull this away because there's gonna be two of these type of tabs which are gonna lock this in. So what you wanna do is stick your screwdriver underneath and pull this up and that's gonna free this tab right here from going underneath and freeing this up. And there's one on that side and then we're gonna do the same on this side right here, pulling that up, and look, now it's free. So, now look at how much easier the airbag will wiggle itself free, just like this. And you can see, we are pretty much separated. Now, I just want you to line this up so you don't forget, this is kind of how we're gonna do this. So we're turning this over, and we're gonna turn this over here, and we're gonna pull this out, just like this. And I guess we're gonna have to disconnect those. Now, if you wanted to disconnect that last uh, little airbag thing, you can. I'm just leaving it on for simplicity. But what we're gonna do is slide this airbag out just like this. And remember, the same way we wanna slide it on, just like that. And you wanna wiggle this back in like that. Now we can close everything up. You just don't wanna forget where you had originally placed it so that we don't lose it slide out and you might have to push these in while you do it you can see this one over here is getting caught so push this in and then pull and it should start to come out all the way around just like this and you can see slide it off this can come off too obviously it doesn't really make much of a difference and then you can slide this out now, this is obviously not going to be broken but you'll understand. Just to make things a bit easier, I just didn't wanna forget where this goes, but at the end of the day, we'll figure it out. Just un unpull this, and now you can free this, and you can reassemble it that much easier. Sorry for the confusion, but just go around the airbag now that we have everything aligned, and push everything in. You can see it's clipping all in, just like that, give it a a good squeeze and now take the screwdriver and you want to bend these tabs down again All right you can also use a needle nose which makes this process a lot easier than the flathead just to kind of bend these back and around it you can see i just kind of like plopped it right in now now after you push down these tabs you can see you just kind of want to bend them behind there it's a little bit harder to do on a new this new airbag cover with the screwdriver so get yourself you know a needle nose pliers and be careful and you'll you'll get it in there easy the next thing you're going to need to do is take your screwdriver and you're going to bend these tabs underneath it just like that and just walk your way around and make sure that this metal is underneath the plastic because this is what holds this from flying out with the airbag if it ever was to deploy so make sure you push them back in underneath the plastic so again using a screwdriver since this is a new airbag cover it is just a slight bit of a pain 
pushing these under, but you just pry them back and push them forward and you just make sure the metal is underneath all the tabs. That's kind of the goal here. It's a bit stiffer, but just take your time. You just pry them out like that and they will fit all underneath where they're supposed to go everywhere. The next step is you wanna just reconnect that airbag thing that we disconnected here. So you line them up. Again, you can't confuse it. Two top, small on the bottom, and you just take this underneath and we are just going to clip it in like this. And then always remember, push down. That confirms it. Otherwise, you're gonna get an airbag light. So always push it down in and then you can place this on top just like that. Putting this on and this goes just like this. You line it up with the holes, push these tabs back in. You'll have one here, one here and one here. It'll click into place. You can slide this on on all four. So now that everything is plugged in, you wanna push this down to make sure everything clicks back into place here. Then what we are going to need to do is re-torque the four T45 screws. These back in place, one there. Now just give these a nice torque. they are all tightened down because this is what actually starts your horn. These tabs right here, when you push on it, they'll touch and that will turn your horn on. So you just want to get these tight, 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 tight. Okay. Now that everything is working, double check. We want to put everything back in. So first thing goes is this clip, which goes somewhere over here. You're gonna have to feel for it. Can you see it's so dark? Oh, I found it. Okay, right here, you hear a click. Next is the actual airbag itself. This goes right on here, push it forward. And remember again, if you don't push this in, you're gonna get an airbag light. That locks it. Now, center the wheel. And remember, listen for two clicks. One, two. And now we have a fully retrofitted custom airbag. Now just, we need to put the battery back in and then reset the car. There's gonna be codes. We're gonna drive it around, make sure all the codes go away, which they will. And then uh, you'll be good to go. So with the battery re-plugged back in, it is time to start the car. Horn works. <laughs> Gotta push it a little bit harder. That's cause the airbag is overlaid with the leather, but works good, start it up. Naturally, you're gonna have a bunch of codes because you, like I said, we reset everything. So these will all go away as we drive the car for the most part, and then we'll uh, go from there. So let's just give it a, a quick spin and all these codes should inevitably go away. Just be, you know, aware that you're gonna get a bunch of codes on the car. And we'll take it for a loop and inevitably these codes should just come off as you drive. Yeah, see everything's going away. And just like that, after a few turns, we have all the codes back off the car. We have a gorgeous steering wheel, literally so gorgeous. This really upgrades the whole aesthetic of the car and it matches the leather and the uh, the black that comes on it and the blue, the blue accents like the blue gauges. Check it out one last time. Look at that, so sick the flat bottom. Alrighty guys, so that is gonna be it for today's video on how to install a custom carbon fiber steering wheel and a custom airbag cover. I apologize for the little bit of confusion you guys might have had when it came to actually uh, taking the little clip off the airbag itself, the little yellow and orange clip. I was trying to avoid unplugging everything, but it's just easier if you pull that off with it. Uh, then you don't have to get everything in the way and you can fully take off that back piece and have just the airbag itself to play with. So you can skip ahead with that. You don't have to do it the exact way that I did. Once everything's off the car, you're totally fine. But for those that are wondering where you can pick one of these bad boys up, Stick around, because I'm about to tell you. Now, for all those wondering where and how I got the steering wheel, I'm in a lot of Audi A3 S3 RS3 groups, and I found this automotive page because she was promoting it in a group. This is her page. It's called Modified Car Show, as you guys can see here. She sells a ton of stuff, and she's from Shenzhen, China, and works directly with the actual factory that makes this stuff, which is super cool. Literally click in here. I'll have a link to this down in the description below. Make sure to check it out. You 
use code Hayden, mention Hayden, H-A-Y-D-E-N, in the messages here. Just click message and message her and let her know that I sent you and you'll be able to get a discount, which is super cool. You can see she has a ton of really cool products here. You could probably email her as well if you wanted that option, but your best bet is to click message because she's super active on uh, the page here. But this is all the stuff that she got. This is everything that I got, but they have a ton of super cool Audi products for the A3, the S3, the RS3 for all other Audi products as well, BMW. I mean, they have everything, so it's really cool. Highly recommend checking it out down in the comments below. And I'm saying her because the actual owner of this page is called Christina Chen. And I believe if I can find it, this is her right here. You can either message her directly. This is who I usually speak to. And she was able to send this to me. I sent her uh, a PayPal business. She sent me her link, uh, a long email. I paid her on PayPal business and it came to me in about two to three weeks. She sent me tracking and she's super legit and super reliable. So I highly recommend using her or messaging modified car show to get your wheels with that being said definitely make sure to smash the like button turn on post notifications subscribe guys i'll answer all your questions down in the comments below and i'll see you in the next video peace